thing. They think it's an environmental thing. They think perhaps because we live in a somewhat cool climate, we spent more time indoors, and there might be some kind of environmental trigger. End result is nobody knows what's going on. They have no clue how it happens or, you know, if just it's being diagnosed more easily or more rapidly now or, uh, you know, it's it, it, it's really impossible to say what's even going on or how it happened or why I'm the only guy out of the whole school that got it, you know, and everybody else is a female and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's it's a weird disease with a lot of unknown variables that, you know, with support from, you know, the station and, you know, the MS Society hopefully will have more answers for in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, we can only hope. A very inspirational story. We're going to come back and hear more from Kurt. And when we come back there, I want you to impress upon you the positive aspects, you know, how he has come to grips with this. And, again, when so many adverse things are happening to our life, it's very inspirational to find somebody who takes that, turns it around, makes it a positive. We'll be back with more of his story here on Straight Talk. The second annual Maryland Boat Builders and Dealers Expo is setting sail for Sailwinds Park in Cambridge. 866-687-5483. You can also email the show straight.talk1240 at live.com. Yes, we're back on Straight Talk. At this hour, we're talking to Kirk Clodfelter. He is a gentleman who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and instead of letting that be a down for him for the rest of his life. Seven years later, he's leading a very productive life on a lot of different levels. And we want to implore you to listen to the, so the story of this gentleman, what he had to go through. Also, we have with us on the phone line Chris McNamara, and he's with uh, Eagle Rare. And let's talk. Chris, if we could talk to you a little bit, uh, how did your organization uh, become involved in this, and what is it that you seek? to get there by sponsoring events like this? Well, the, the Rare Life Award uh, really is uh, an annual reward. It's uh, really the idea is really to create and find those stories that are out there across uh, America that really speak to uh, the character of, of our, one of, of, of our product. Um, we kind of, you know, have our passions, which all go back to courage and leadership and survival, um, devotion, character, and heroism. And, and when we... Um, when we were trying to think about what we wanted to do with our brand, we wanted to make sure that we were promoting uh, these great stories because we feel that those stories are really what makes America and what is really, um, there's so many that go untold. Uh, so that was really the, the idea behind the Rare Life Award, which is really an, honor, uh, an annual award that we'll be running every year. And, and Kurt, um, which you, you all just listened to, is uh, a great recipient of the award. Obviously, he, he was given the award for character, and it really stands out when you listen to his story and you see his story, um, and to see all of the things that he has to, he has overcome and continues to overcome on a daily daily basis uh, just shows um, a man of extremely great character, um, not only for what he has to go through every day, but the fact that he then gives so much to others. Um, was a story that we really thought needed to be recognized. And let's talk a little bit about, because uh, we want to get understand that. Uh, listeners, what had happened is, is Eagle Rare, and tell us a little bit about your company also, uh, because I believe that uh, your involvement in uh, scenarios that are playing out this, uh, can you talk to us a little bit about, about your company, maybe give you some recognition for what you're doing, and then also talk about the donation that you made, where that went, mm -hmm. and how that benefits the community. Okay, well, well, uh, our organization, uh, Eagle, Eagle, the Eagle Rare Life Award, is actually part of the uh, Buffalo Trace Distillery. Eagle Rare Life is uh, is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey um, here in the the heartland of Kentucky, and um, our our involvement um, obviously is, is is distilling and making whiskey, um, and and then producing that for the public. But um, one thing that's at the core of our, our organization is that. Um, we don't um, outwardly go and push our products in mass media and all that. We we really um, want to be associated with great stories, and we think that there's more great stories out there than anything. What um, what the the donation that that we give, and, and the idea was that we would uh, give a a thousand dollars to Sarah's house on, on Kurt's behalf. Um, that was a charity that um, he spoke. Um, I believe they they shelter um, a shelter for families in need. Because um, we know that that's something that 
he is passionate about, and we want to be passionate about the things that Kurt's passionate about because he's, you know, he is a, a rare story, uh, and that's and that's really where what, what we are all about. Um, we're we're located in Frankfort, um, Kentucky, the capital of Kentucky, um, and uh, and that's really that's really what we like to do. Well, uh, a truly a good story because here's another corporation out there. You know, a corporation get the bad name. More you care about is you know. Uh, bringing home the profits, putting them away, making more profits for the next guy. But here's a company that actually goes out there and establishes a Rare Life Award to consider people like Kurt, who have done so much for the community, and then on their in their name make a donation that is very meaningful. The only thing we hold against you is a producer asked you, he said that he requested that you send samples up here for us and, and never came i think well well technically we can't mail that would be against federal regulations that's technically yes. we don't play technically <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it, it was really uh when we came up with the idea um you know and that's and that's really the core of of, of our organization we are all about um we know that the most important thing out there are, are is the american story and the people that create those stories every day and that's that's really where this this award came from. So we, we're we're happy to donate the money, and to give back to the people that are out there really doing so much. Um, without them, you know, people often forget how important those people are because they're helping so many other people's lives. And we want we really want to be a part of that and give give gratitude to them for for all they've done. Right, and we'll um, go back to Kurt. The, Kurt, uh, you made your donation in Sarah's house. Yes, sir. And a uh, little bit about how you chose that and uh, what they do out there. Sarah's house is uh, a really interesting charity, a really interesting homeless shelter, if you will, uh, in as much as they, they don't operate like a just a soup kitchen or a or church basement with a bunch of cots in it. Um, Sarah's house has actually been recognized by presidents in the past. They are a joint venture between the United States Army uh, the Catholic Charities of Baltimore and uh, the Anne Arundel County and I believe also the Maryland State Governments are all, uh, you know, partners in this project. Uh, last year, I know Sarah's House helped over 500 homeless families um, with temporary shelter, uh, you know, rides to work as needed. And and the great thing about Sarah's House is Sarah's House is definitely not a handout. It's more of a hand up. Um and what they do is, you know, you, you come in and there's a temporary shelter scenario where, you know, something bad happened, but you're going to get turned around real quick. You know, you just go, you need a place to stay for a couple of weeks to get you covered. Uh, if after that period of time, you're, you're still not ready to go, uh, you know, start again, as it were, they have uh, short-term housing, short-term temporary housing that goes for as much as two years, I believe, uh, where you move into an apartment scenario. Um and you know they while while all this is happening they also have parenting classes they offer child care they offer rides to and from work and doctors appointment for their uh, clients they are adamant about drug testing uh career counseling you know they have a GED program they offer um there's over 600 volunteers that you know log thousands and thousands and thousands of man hours at Sarah's house every year um in order to benefit those of us in our community that you know hit a little speed bump and what's great about sarah's house is there's you know there's an absolute zero tolerance policy for somebody who's there just because they're lazy it's not a matter of you don't want to do something it's not an you know. option it's not and you know and it's not it, it's not going to be tolerated you know i mean the, the again the interesting thing about sarah's house is the vast majority of who they help are families not uh you know single adults or anything like that these are families there's a lot of kids there uh, one of the most touching stories I ever heard about Sarah's House about one of their policies is uh, they are located right in Fort Meade, which is part of why the uh, you know Fort Meade is in, involved in this. Um, and what they do, what they make sure is you know they have a school bus comes by and picks up the kids to uh, you know take them to the area schools and whatnot. And that school bus picks those kids up first and drops them off last, just so nobody in their class will ever know that they're staying at a homeless shelter. And uh, you know that's that's a level of consideration that you don't just see everywhere you know this is somebody sat down and thought about this and said this is you know we want to make this as least stressful as possible for these kids um you know it's it their family fell on hard times they're here with them you know they're going through this too we can't just neglect the fact that they've got feelings and emotions and you know side effects of this particular situation 
Um, so the way I got started with it is my uh, my mother actually is the nurse manager for critical care, uh, the critical care unit over at Baltimore Washington Medical Center. And 